Despite being 20 years old, the Windows 2000 operating system is still a highly capable OS. You can use it for many modern things, and pretty much even use it as a daily driver operating system. But it's not exactly straightforward, so we're going to have to take a look at how exactly you would set it up to use it as a daily operating system in the year 2020 and beyond. The first thing you need to do is choose an installation media and a computer. Generally anything older than a Core 2 Duo, well Core 2 Duo and older, should be able to install and run 2000 just fine, and much more modern hardware is capable of running Windows 2000 with full driver support as well, it just takes a lot more tweaking. And I would recommend a system later than a Pentium, than a Pentium 2, so like Pentium 3 class and higher should run Windows 2000 just fine. However, anything older than a Pentium 4 or an Athlon 64, you will run into problems due to not having an SSC2 instruction set. Before you actually install Windows 2000, the first thing you should do is go into the system BIOS setup and uh, make sure if you're using SATA drives that you have the SATA mode set to either IDE or Legacy or something to that effect. Or you could slipstream your SATA drivers, but this is a lot more simpler. So I would just recommend going this way. So once you get a, once you uh, burn your CD, or or if you have a legitimate CD, you can boot from that, and and it's pretty straightforward. It's relatively similar to a Windows XP installation if you've ever done that. If your hard drive is uh, larger than 137 gigabytes, unless you have a modified Windows 2000 ISO you're only going to see like 131 gigabytes or so while, inst while installing. But after you finish setup and ha have Service Pack 4 installed, you can run a tweak that will allow you to see the rest of your hard drive and you can use a partition manager to resize the partition to fill the whole hard drive. But I'm not here to talk too much about the Windows 2000 installation process because that's already been well documented and it's fairly straightforward. The next thing you need to do is install your system drivers for Windows 2000. Usually this is as easy as going to your motherboard or computer manufacturer's website and downloading the drivers for their site, like I did here. And I just put them all in this folder on a flash drive and copied them over to the computer and installed them. And there is also this nice tool called Snappy Driver Installer, which an older version does work on Windows 2000, and it's very handy for automatically installing all your devices. I will put a link to it in the description. Also, if you're on wireless, there is an extremely handy utility known as Boingo, or Boingo, I'm not exactly sure how it's pronounced. But basically, it enables you to have relatively modern security ciphers like WPA, WPA2, that sort of stuff on Windows 2000 with basically almost any wireless adapter. And it's very straightforward to use. You just need to select your network and type in your password and tell it if you want to automatically connect or not. And that's basically it. However, if you're not on wireless hardware, LAN is straightforward as it's ever been. You just plug in the cable and go in most any circumstance. Upon getting all your drivers configured, the very next thing you're going to want to do is install Internet Explorer 6 Service Pack 1. Now obviously this browser is horribly out of date and not good for much, but we will need it to run Windows Update and updates many core system files, so that's why we need to install it. It will take a while, as you can see I've sped up the footage quite a bit here, and it still seems to take a while, but like I said it's because of how much it actually installs. Eventually it will tell you it's time to restart your computer, and once that completes, which you will notice that the boot time will be a bit longer as it updates the system, and you will also notice that it has a special screen that you only see once, telling you that it's configuring various things on the computer. Once you're upgraded to Internet Explorer 6, you can take a short test drive, but you'll notice that like I said, this browser is very out of date and not a whole lot is going to load. However, my website does load just fine. 
The next thing you're going to need to do is install Windows 2000 Update Rollup 1, which is basically like a smaller version of a service pack, and this just installs a lot more updates, including ones that are required to run Windows Update. Once again, this one is one of the longer ones, so you will need to wait for a while. Perhaps get a cup of coffee if that's your thing. After that's installed, you'll need to restart the computer again, and after that, you can run the next update, which is the Windows Update Agent installer. And this will update it to the latest update agent for Windows 2000, and will allow you to use Windows Update. You can move on to the next update, which is the Root Certificate installer, which updates basically security certificates that Internet Explorer uses to talk to other websites. The next and final thing you install before the big enchilada is the Windows 2000 Internet Explorer hotfix, which is the final update you need to be able to use Internet Explorer to run Windows Update. And yes, you do need to restart the computer once again. Once that's done, do take a moment to verify your system time and date as secure ciphers need a correct time and date to be able to sync with each other and load the website correctly. And, and if you have a dead CMOS battery, you'll find yourself doing this a lot, so maybe invest in a new clock battery. Once you've verified that that's correct, you can go ahead and open the Start menu and click on the Windows Update option. If you don't have that, you can go to windowsupdate.microsoft.com and it will get you to the same place. However, clicking Windows Update in the Tools menu of Internet Explorer will not work. And as you can see, it gave an error message here, which we can quickly resolve by opening Internet Options and scrolling all the way down, checking the Use TLS 1.0 option. And then also, you do need to verify that near the top, Automatically Check for Internet Explorer Updates is unchecked. After you've verified that, you can go ahead and refresh the page and you notice that Windows Update should give a more promising message saying that it needs to update some files. After you go and click Check, you can just click Express this time, since it's just going to update some stuff before you can actually use Windows Update. And you will need to restart the computer once again. Once you check for updates again, you can just choose the Express option for the first time. You'll notice that you do have a lot of updates to install. Just keep them all selected and click Install Updates and wait for it to complete. You may notice that update checking is a lot faster than on newer operating systems, or at least it should be. That's because the Windows Update mechanism in Windows 2000 is a lot more streamlined than on newer computers. After that, you will need to restart the computer once again, but that is, in terms of volume, the majority of your updates. So, from now on, start clicking the Custom option. I would go and not actually do what I do here first, but I would go and install the ones that you need to install separately first, and that way you can install all of the important and optional updates in one go after you do that. Because there are updates that add more updates, so basically just check everything, and then keep running it until you notice that no updates are, are any longer available. The notable ones that you have to install separately are DirectX 9.0c and Windows Media Player 9. Once again, DirectX 9 and Windows Media Player 9 are very outdated, but you will need DirectX to play games and Windows Media Player updates some files. However, I don't think it's actually necessary, but just install it to be safe. Eventually, you'll reach a point where you've installed all the updates to the Windows 2000 Final Patch Tuesday in 2010. At this point, it's time to close Windows Update and go ahead and restart the computer if you need to. We're moving on to installing the big one, Kernel X. 
This has been made by MSFN user Blackwing Cat, who has devoted much time to produce many versions of this Kernel X. I will provide a direct link because as you can see, his website is full of Japanese characters, and while I have nothing against Japan, I can't read that. And I'm assuming a majority of my viewers also can't. But I'll provide a link to his project just in case you want to check it out. His downloads aren't very reliable, as you can see I got a bad gateway error. In any case, once you have the latest version of the extended kernel downloaded, it's just as simple as running it. Once you get this thing saying, would you like to install the root certificate update, just click OK. And same for the next Windows installer thing, you can also just click OK. And the only thing you should change here is disabled SSC2, but that's only if you have a Pentium 3 or an Athlon XP or something like that that does not have SSC2. If you have a Pentium 4, Athlon 64, or newer, just don't check it and don't you, re you really don't need to do anything else here but click Execute. And you will get a familiar looking update screen, and you can just click that you agree, and it will back up files and then install the extended kernel. Now of course you will need to restart the computer after this one, so just go ahead and do so. And once the computer is restarted, you may notice that it provides this error about Net Framework 4, you can just click OK, it doesn't seem to be anything major. I would recommend opening up Internet Explorer and going back to the Internet Properties screen, check both of those, use TLS 1.1 and 1.2, as these will allow you to use more modern applications that require modern security ciphers to talk to the Internet, but don't provide their own. And the next thing you can do is get a modern browser, which Yes, there are currently updated browsers that work on 2000 Extended Kernel, such as MSFN member RoyTam1's much appreciated Firefox-based browser Builds, which you can download using my browser installer that I cobbled together. There's many to choose from, it doesn't really matter which one you choose, just make sure it's 32-bit, otherwise x86 version as that is the only thing that will run on Windows 2000, as Windows 2000 is 32-bit only. In this case, I chose Pale Moon 28, but you can choose really whatever you want to. But once you get that installed, you have yourself a shiny new browser which is compatible with almost all of the modern web. You can even do intensive stuff as long as your system is powerful enough, such as watching YouTube, as I demonstrate here. Most of the slowness you see in loading pages is actually my internet, which is really bad, but as you can see this video does wind up playing fine, even in full screen mode. A handy little tool that allows you to bypass this operating system as unsupported prompts in setup and applications is called the application compatibility launcher and you just drag and drop stuff onto it and then if it's not an installer you can click yes to save your settings if it worked and then it will start automatically. That's what I'm using to install Firefox and as you can see it went just fine and didn't throw any OS's unsupported message like it normally would. Now Firefox isn't updated anymore so I would recommend the using a Firefox derivative from Waritam 1 However, it does still browse the modern web. Now, while it is getting outdated and, ev and even more so every day, it is worth mentioning that the latest versions of Flash Player will install just fine, and that enables you to do some cool stuff like retro gaming or running the NFB Waterlife page, which honestly is pretty neat. Now, while I did try to get several cloud storage programs working, none of them worked really well. I had to use the application compatibility launcher to get Yandex Disk to install. However, it basically just crashed over and over. It does remain running for a little while while it's crashed, so I guess it sort of works, but eventually it will freeze. 
I would really just recommend using the web versions of your cloud storage things because they don't really seem to work that well on Windows 2000. Check this out. And you will notice that some MSI uh, installers don't work. Well, you can edit them. I would just recommend seeing if there's a, a portable installer or an EXE based installer. As you can see here, this just threw a, a operating system as unsupported message and refused to install. However, the portable version installs and works just fine on Windows 2000. As you can see, I'm using a portable apps version, and that's installing slowly, but just fine. And you can specify to install it to the program files and make your shortcuts if you would like. You can also run uh, OpenOffice, however that's updated less frequently, and although LibreOffice is not updated anymore, I consider it to be somewhat better than OpenOffice, but your mileage may vary. As you can see here, VLC Media Player also throws similar errors as a lot of other installers do, and I'll show you a different tool that you can use to restore compatibility which is more advanced and basically a big brother of the application compatibility launcher. You can either open your file manually as shown here, or you can drag and drop. And the most important things are this OS version thing on the, on the top, and you can choose the OS version and the service pack, and then do compat save and run compat. And you should notice that your executable will now install and or work depending on your use case because some programs do block themselves from just running and not just installing. But as you can see here, it works fine for VLC Media Player, as would have the Application Compatibility Launcher. However, FC Win 2 k allows you to do more stuff, which could be handy. Now for screenshot editing, I, my favorite tool, LightShot, installs just fine with the Compatibility Launcher, and it works just fine only throwing an error message at the end of the installation, but that doesn't really matter as it seems to work just fine. Now for gaming, you will notice that it, this is one of the areas where Windows 2000 suffers, as a lot of XP and later compatible games will not work, and of course, almost no modern games run on DirectX 9 only, so that will be a downfall here. Now moving on to instant messaging, about the only chat thing that I can think of that still works on Windows 2000 is Telegram, although that's really because that's the only one I use besides Discord, so I'm not really sure what else is out there. You will notice that the last version for Windows XP and Vista, 1.18.15, works just fine, however it crashes on animated stickers, so stay away from those, or use web. While Discord app does not run on anything lower than Windows 7, you can use it in a web browser just fine. Now I'm sure all of you not acquainted with old operating systems are going to be asking about Chrome. Well, yes, it does work using this no sandbox tag as I show here that you add to the target. Um, you do need to keep in mind that its security ciphers are reliant on Windows itself and are very outdated, and as such doesn't really work that well with the modern web. So thanks for watching this video on Windows 2000, and I hope this ri I hope this opens the door for you to experimenting with old operating systems, and also shows you that it really is usable today for a lot of things. Some people don't even think that Windows XP is usable, and in some cases they are right, because they some people do require modern modern tools that don't run on older stuff. However, for a vast majority of people. It really is still usable, but do keep in mind that it is not updated anymore, so it isn't the most secure thing in the world, but it is nice to mess around with. Thank you for watching this video, and I hope you had an excellent holiday season, and Happy New Year's 2002!